LA Talk Radio thanks you for being a listener. Did you know you too can host your own radio show with us? Go to our site at latalkradio.com or email info at latalkradio.com right now and start your show today. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey, Rifters, Keith and Alan here, and we want to give a shout-out to our sponsors. Yeah, man. How many people out there listening have ever fucked around in the water? What? I mean kayaking, paddleboarding, or even just going to the beach. Oh, yeah, that's me. Have you ever wanted to take something important with you, so you put it inside those three zip lock bags and seal them real tight, and then when you dive in the water and you get out, your stuff is, like, fucking soaked? It happened to me once. On a trip to Hawaii. What happened, Alan? I met this gal. She gave me her number on a piece of paper, and I zip-locked bagged it and took a dip to swim with the alligators. I came back to the shorelines, and Megan Fox's number was soaked. Well, now, Alan, don't you worry. I got a solution for that. Why is that? If you Because Fluid Tide Worldwide is here to help us. They are a manufacturing company of high-quality dry bags. You put your stuff in it, roll it up to the top, and your stuff stays bone dry in the river or even on the beaches of Hawaii while you swim with the alligators. Oh, that's cool. It is cool, Alan. Their LCV-1 is a 20-liter bag. It's big enough to put all your stuff in it, like a cell phone, iPad, wallet, or a picture of Megan Fox. I want one, Keith. How do I get one? Easy. Print it off the internet. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding. Uh, go to search Flot Tide LCV1 on Amazon and check out their website, www.floodtide.com. F L O O D T I D E.com. And you can also find them on the Facebook and on the Instagram. Back to the show. Excellent, guys. Welcome to Razor Riffs. Yeah, man. That, that was a fun sponsor. Oh, I, I am still thinking of the alligators in the trip to Hawaii, man. Yeah, that was funny. Oh, right? shoot, man. Uh, because uh, alligators at this time of year in Hawaii are very dangerous. Well, you know, it, it all depends on uh, on the alligator, you know. <laughs> I was going to say crocodile. <laughs> oh, my God. But, uh, I thought that was a different type of species. I thought they were not the same crocodiles and alligators. Yeah, they are different. But when I was growing up, I yeah. always thought like an alligator was a male and a crocodile was a female. You know, I know that uh, we could go into the whole Kate. Caitlyn thing, Caitlyn Jenner. No, no, but, but these we know these. No, but I'm serious because Al, Ligator. Oh, right, that's He's cute. Al, Al Croc, Croc, a dial. Dial. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I don't know how many yeah. handsome ladies you've met named Croc, but I've met oh, a good lot. Good point. Good point. That sounds nasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a great so, show. Well, you, you I hope before, so. Before we uh, talk about our guests, but you were in New York. Yes, I was indeed last week. I how was that? It was fantastic, and I told you the story coming up here, and I'm not going to go over it right now, uh, but. I had a great time. I stayed with my mom in New York City. You know, she's got a beautiful apartment there uh, on Madison Avenue, and you know, my sister's not far away. And like I said, what's really funny about this is that our guest, his show, which I, I'll be quite frank with you, I hadn't seen some of the episodes. I hadn't seen one. In fact, an entire uh, uh, part of his series I hadn't seen. My mom says, "Here, you got. You know, you don't have cable. You don't have all the channels. You know, here, watch and enjoy." So I said, "What? What the heck? I'm I'm channel surfing, and guess what?" I watch, uh, and you corrected me, and I don't want to screw this up. Uh, I watch the show. Tell well, me, why tell don't me. you save the story for when uh, he calls? Yeah, I'm just telling the audience. I'm just telling. I'm telling you. I'm just you know. I'm just telling the audience that this guest is fantastic. His show is fantastic. The closer. Well, let me give him an introduction in case he ca- he calls while we do the introduction. So I'll mention the guest and then. Go we'll, ahead. Why don't you? Is that cool? Our guest today is a very talented writer. Uh, he wrote my favorite play called Homefront. Uh, he wrote 
the TV show The Closer. He created that. Yes. And he also wrote and created the hit TV show on TNT called Major, Major Crimes. Crimes. Yeah, and it's the one and only James Duff, yeah. who uh, is actually our very first... I mean, everyone we've had on the show has been a writer at some point, but uh, this is our official writer. Like, that's all he does is write. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say that that's a big deal with him. Yeah. He def- definitely is a writer. Yeah. And uh, I look very forward to talking to him. And, uh, you know, w- while we're waiting here, Major Crimes is what I saw. And I can tell you, great show. Yeah. Great show. It's fantastic. Oh, someone's calling us. Let's pick it up. Hi, is this James? Yes, is this Keith? Yes, it is. Hey, James, how are you, pal? Fine, how are you? Doing Hello. great. Uh, James, this is my uh, trusty sidekick, Alan Lee. Mm-hmm. Hi, yeah. Alan. Hi, James. Glad to meet you. James, thank you so Good. much for doing the show. I'm a yes, huge fan please. of your work. I was telling Alan that I wrote you on Facebook. That's how I got it. Because you're a hard man to keep a hold of, you know? I'm sorry. It's not that I'm uh, so secretive, or, nor am I. Do I write mysteries? I'm. I am not a man of mystery. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, when we're not uh, actually airing shows, I don't really do much in the way of publicity. Yeah. So it's that's why it's probably harder to reach me than yeah. maybe most people. Well, I I don't know if you remember my email, but uh, I'm a huge fan of your play Homefront. Which, yes, I did. I did remember your email, and I was, I was really thrilled to to see that. I, I know the play is uh, used a lot in, yeah. in acting classes. Yes, yeah, yes, it is. And uh, and I've I've spoken to several young actors who have played Jeremy mm-hmm. over the years yeah. and have done the scene, the scene between Jeremy and his sister, yes. Karen. Yes, and uh, and the play keeps getting done now and again you know it was very much more popular overseas than it was in america oh, really because really? in america yeah in america everybody gets tripped up over the vietnam of it all where i thought vietnam was a metaphor yes. for the loss of innocence and that is indeed how it's read overseas as a as a big metaphor for the loss of innocence but uh everyone was not everyone, but there were a lot of critics who were incredibly bloody, literally. I mean, they, they just took everything. They were just bloody, literal-minded about the whole thing. It was it was a big surprise to me, uh, but it was my very first play. I was only 28 when we did it in London. Wow. And nice. So it was, it was a big surprise to me that... Uh, uh, maybe I had. <laughs> it's possibly I possible I dramatized it uh, to the point where people uh, thought it was actually about Vietnam. I don't know what to. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that. But I thought it was great because uh, I I first came across of it because uh, I saw the movie called The War at Home. It was on. Right. Uh, it was on a uh, TV, and I thought, oh my god, that was a fantastic script when I was in high school. So I got the play, and I thought the play was just fantastic. And to me, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes, we had to we had to cut that Jeremy speech from uh, the movie too. The uh, the speech about Brady, his friend Brady. Who, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that was sort of the centerpiece of that scene, and we but it worked very well without Emilio Estevez did a fantastic job directing that movie. I thought. Oh and, yeah, uh, he really did. I was I was telling Alan how uh, that that movie came out how Emilio liked the play so much he said that he wanted to make this uh, a film is that that's true right that's what i read yes i think they he did a read through this was before he met me yeah. so he did a read through uh with um i think his father and some other people and he loved it so much yeah he loved it so much he contacted me and we ended up uh doing the movie yeah. It was, and or he ended up doing most of the movie. I mean, I I wrote the script and he starred and directed in it. And he was, you know, as as well acted as it was. It was it was really really stupendously directed. He's he's an incredibly gifted guy, Emilio. Yeah, it was fantastic. 
I, w- I was wondering how come like there wasn't a huge big budget for it because it was just such an original story that I would think it would be huge mainstream everywhere, but it's hard to find well, on DVD. And, and this is this is the problem uh, because with the with the story and, and like I said, I was young when I wrote it and I didn't know that it was going to be a problem. But Vietnam was not uh, and still is not. It's it's a hard sell. Yeah in uh, the commercial arena. Mm -hmm. And that's where the movie had to exist. And we got some really fantastic reviews. In fact, the movie uh, was better received than the play. I was, you know, I was essentially called Mm -hmm. um, anti-American, which is ridiculous, but that's, uh, that was sort of the uh, idea of, that a lot of critics promoted yeah. and that uh, so I think the 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 movie is sometimes seen as being critical of America and mm-hmm. you know I I don't know what to do about that yeah. because it's not it's it's a very I think truthful honest story and uh, the characters are are perceived as that overseas like you know like it did it went all around the world that play and uh and really had a a great run in many countries and just in america uh because it's the vietnam thing yeah i don't know alan was telling me it's hard it's hard to do movies about or plays about wars you've lost yeah Yeah, no it's it's not uh a, a fun a fun american theme (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Alan told me he saw it at Long Beach. How many years? You ago? know what? I I, I I I might want to stand corrected on that. But I saw what I thought was a version of Hometown. Homefront. I mean, Homefront. Excuse me, Hometown. That's a buffet. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's a day. It's, I'm, uh, I'm it's getting hungry. Perfectly okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eat and there all the time. I, oh, good. Thank you. You're all, see. There you go. What this? You know what? What a guest. <laughs> uh, you know, James. It was in Long Beach, and I, 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 I might be confused. It was the actress of all all things that was in the uh, in the horror movie. Uh, God, I'm, I'm blanking out here. It was the uh, Marvel character, uh, the Swamp Thing. I know this is a strange way to describe the play, but you know, she was doing it in Long Beach, and it was you know, it was a Vietnam vet. He comes home, right? He has the uh, you know the the. Uh, memory blanks and all that react with the father and all that and I, I really enjoyed it there I'm sorry I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the actress yeah. uh, but uh, I saw it in Long Beach oh it's on the on the stage you saw it yes yes on the stage oh yeah. oh wow yeah. well you know I, I know they did a you know they do it's you know it's they do productions of it I, I do know that productions of it have popped up around the country yeah and yeah. Uh, it's the play is in the bestseller section at uh, Sam at Dramatist so I, I know yeah. that young people in particular like that play. but I, And I think, actually, young people like it better now than they did when I was growing up because they don't have the same memories of Vietnam. No, they, they don't. They don't. The perspective is, it doesn't hit them quite the same way, and they really do see it as a parental, the father, uh, you know, the whole family deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was conce- the play was conceived as... I, because I didn't know anything. I'd never written a play for adults before right. I wrote that play. And I, I went back to Aristotle. Yes, and I yes. Just, because I didn't, know, I didn't know where to start. So I thought, well, I'm going to start at the beginning. And I, I went back to Aristotle, and, it was, and, I, and I thought, if I could make this family the protagonist, then they would stand for all families everywhere exactly and then each individual an antagonist so that it's the inability the an the antagonist inability to to properly come together exactly it destroys the protagonist and it all takes place in 24 hours uh i didn't necessarily feel like it had to go sun up to sundown so i but i did make it a i did compress the time and i did i did put it all you know i started at the point of crisis and and uh, I, uh, I I felt like I was I felt like I was on something. And also, you know, the the uh, the movements inside the piece 
the act, the two scenes per act. And I thought of it in, in terms of writing like a little symphony and writing four movements because I was much more familiar with musical composition at that mm. time than oh. I was with writing drama. Yeah. So I sort of combined uh, the concept of classical music in Aristotle, tried to radicalize it a little bit. And I don't know, I had a lot of fun writing it. It was a, it was a blast. Oh, wow. That's and, great. Does it make you feel good that, like, when, like, have you ever seen, like, a production of Homefront, like, recently where people are recently reacting it? And, like, does that, like, that's just got to be so cool because you wrote one of the greatest plays ever and you get to see it, you know, passed down from, you know, years. It's, it's, well, I don't know if it's one of the greatest plays ever, but oh, I do I know think it, it is. is. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun to to see people still enjoying it and still uh, finding it useful. I we we just watched um, uh, last last month um, the 25th anniversary of the first TV movie I ever wrote, which was called Doing Time on Maple Drive. I actually watched that and last night. Keith has just watched that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I watched that with the crowd, yeah. and that was great too because, you know, it, it didn't seem to have become as dated as it, as I thought. I was afraid it might have. I hadn't seen it in a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, to see young people laughing at the right places too, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and really, really enjoying the show. Uh, that was that was really I, I have to say it made me feel very happy leaving uh the screening and uh, just glad that i I was able to still be relevant um twenty five years after the fact yeah. uh, and the panel discussion afterwards was fun too it's you know i I'm not one of those people who actually uh, writes with the idea of posterity in mind because I'm not going to be around to enjoy it. Right. And but but I'm I'm thrilled when whenever anybody likes anything because people <laughs> it's there's so much stuff out there you know every just to to um, be plucked from the general den of the marketplace for any reason at all is somehow an honor in a way yeah. and I'm. And writers like to to ask questions that you know have no answers. Uh, and so you look for big questions, and I think you know the board home and Maple Drive were asking some big questions. That in Maple Drive, for example, you know people on the surface it's about a gay person coming out, but it's actually about denial and how denial permeates mm -hmm. our lives and how it can destroy us or how we can break through it yeah. to find something truer and better. And so the gay thing was actually a metaphor for denial. And that question about denial is still seriously being asked today on lots of different planes. Oh, absolutely yeah. universal. And, and uh, it was a great way to treat that theme. Uh, you know, our country seems uh, pretty much uh, bound up in denial right now. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, so I feel like the movie had some kind of special relevance, uh, relevance uh, uh, when we uh, screened it last month. A lot, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, when I was watching it, I noticed a very young Jim Carrey. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was his first dramatic role. Yeah, and. He was amazing in the movie, and uh, he he really wanted to do the film. He came in, he auditioned for it. He was it was before he had made Ace Ventura. Yeah, I was I was and, telling Alan that I was yeah. yeah. And uh, you know he I think he wanted to do something that showed his range, and he certainly accomplished that. He was I thought he did a fantastic job. Yeah. I I thought and, I did too. And Ken Owen, it oh. was the first movie that there were a lot of firsts. It was my first uh, television drama, 
it was Ken Olin's first uh, movie that he'd ever directed. Wow. Uh, it was Jim Carrey's first drama. I mean, it was uh, it was filled with firsts for a lot of people. And, uh, and it was also the first time I'd ever written a role specifically for an actor. And that actor had played that part. Because I wrote the role of the father in Maple Drive for Jim Sicking. Oh, really? Uh, yes, without ever having met him, by the way. I, ah. I had just watched him several times in lots and lots of things, and I was just like, oh, you know what? This is the face I'm going to write to. This is the voice, the, the rhythms I'm going to write to. And he just knocked it out of the park. I oh, thought. yeah, he did. He was so interesting. His uh, his scenes with uh, his kids were just like it just blew me away because it was like, wow, you know, like he totally changed yeah. 360 on his viewpoints, and I was like, that's fantastic. He was yeah, he had a journey to go on. He went on a big journey, and he did a he just really took you along with him. I mean, the nice thing about that movie, and Jim will tell you the same thing, is that everybody in it uh, thinks they're the lead. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 has some reason to to believe that, and and uh, it was really exciting watching the movie again. With uh, I mean, Billy McNamara was there, and and uh, Lori Laughlin and Jane Brooke, and uh, Jim Sicken came, and it was a we had a nice discussion afterwards. It was really really fun. Uh, a question I have is: uh, How many plays have you uh, written? Because well, I've only written. Two adult plays. I'm finishing my third one. Huh. Uh, I I I left New York to come to Los Angeles, and uh, after Maple Drive, I just uh, worked almost exclusively in television, except for Homefront. Uh, I mean, The War at Home and and uh, uh, rewrites right. uh, of features. I've done a few of those, but I've just mainly exclusively concentrated on television. And, Partially because the writer has so much, um, so much um, control over the story in television, and you get to reach so many people, yeah. so many more people than you do in the theater. And also because uh, it happens much quick, much more quickly than on stage. The the uh, pace from getting a play written to having it staged is glacial, yeah. mostly. And I uh, I didn't like <clears throat> all the time I had to wait to find out whether or not I was going to be waiting tables again. Yeah. So uh, the theater still fascinates me, and I have a new play I'm trying to finish. Um, uh, and I'm I'm hoping that this one will skirt less um, outrageous topics. Homefront was considered very political, and the other play, A Quarrel of Sparrows, was about religion. And so I've I've already broken both the taboos that you're not supposed to yeah. break in writing about seemingly writing overtly about politics, which I was not doing, and a covertly about religion, which I was. I think I think that's another reason why I admire you so much because you you break the rules. You know what I mean? You you don't care. You just write what's in your heart, and I think that, like that's just very important for a writer. You know? Well, I try to write authentically, and to even when I'm not writing about um, things I know well, I I I try to find out about those things so that when I'm telling the story. I have the ring of truth in lots of places. And I always feel like the more authentically you create the world, the more authentic the characters in that world will seem. Yeah. And and the more honestly you tell the story. I, I just take it as writ that I haven't felt anything that most other people uh, haven't felt. I mean, I that I've everything I've felt most other people have felt. Like I'm I don't have a lot of original feelings. Right. I might have my own perspective, which is everybody's perspective is unique. But the feelings that we go through, the the passions, the anger, the the joy, the love, the grief, all of those things I feel are are very much the same from person to person 
I mean, it's just levels, right? Yeah. So, so if I can write honestly about what's going on in my heart. Also, I tend to write about things I don't like about myself. Yeah. Uh, uh, mainly because I don't want to run out of material. And writing about the things I don't like about myself gives me <laughs> uh, the space of my entire life to cover. Yeah, you know, I, I noticed uh, that something was said along those same lines. Uh, uh, the character, uh, the lead pol- the policewoman in uh, The Closer, uh, they use the word yeah. you channeled uh, parts of your personality, and I, I find that fascinating because I, you know, they always say that you can't escape uh, writing about who you are uh, when you write a character. That pieces of you are gonna, you know, they're gonna get in there, and uh, you admitted that, you know, that you used, uh, you know, parts of your of yourself in the character of the closer. Oh, that's absolutely true. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm the two most. Uh, disliked characters in the closer, and that's oddly that's Brenda <laughs> and and oh, that's funny. And, yeah. and when I first, I was kind of stunned, honestly. I mean, I realized you know she she's complicated sure. in many ways, sure. but when I when I was writing her, I thought, well, you know, this is she's a little like this, she's a little like that, but sure. overall. Sure. And when people said, you know, they found her. Incredibly neurotic. You know, I, I tell you, I, I, I agree. I agreed with that, James. <laughs> yes, I know, and I was like, I was like a little stunned. I'm yeah. like, well, I know she's not exactly normal, but she's not like crazy. <laughs> sure. but yeah, yeah. I am. I you see, like, I am this. I'm a workaholic. Sure. And I have a hard time. Pat, I I had to write this pilot, by the way, and. You know, I, I had six weeks wow. basically wow. to do what normally takes me a that's normally a three month process at least for me to figure out what it is I'm going to do. So this was a little bit different I mean, than writing the play. <laughs> oh yeah, and so not having yeah. uh, any time really to think about the character, I just basically based it on me and ripped off my mother and ripped off my sister. That's fantastic. I and think. there she was, and. When people said, I think she's really neurotic, or why is she so crazy about doing her, and she, she's really bad about misleading people, and I was like, well, she's supposed to mislead people. That's, yeah. that's her job, and that's mm-hmm. my job as a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to mislead you into believing this really happened. This is, you're watching a story mm-hmm. that's, you're in the story. Yeah. And so I... Uh, yeah, I was the first few times it popped up. I have to admit my feelings were a little hurt because I was like, "Well, she's not that crazy." But after a while, I got used to it, and and, uh, and really, it was uh, the, I mean, the role of, of Pope was also based on another part of my personality, and it was it was the the uh, relationship between those two characters that I was constantly trying to manage in my own life. Mm -hmm. And honestly, virtually everything I write has something to do with the balance between pragmatism and idealism, Mm -hmm. which is why the justice system is such a great place for me to uh, study. Yes, exactly. The crime genre that you picked, it's just wonderful how you use uh, the crime genre that way. And so I, since I since I had that going, I also had the duality in my own life. You know, we as we all do, we all have uh, the the balance of idealism and pragmatism yes. defined in our daily lives. And Pope represented my ambition and my desire to to be in charge and my my need to to uh, 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 sort of have a have a platform from which to rise and and Brenda represented my desire just to do the work and and just to be precise and to always finish what it is I start and she is you know no matter whether anybody wants it by the time I'm done or not and she was oh my gosh it was a it was it was amazing writing those scenes, especially since they couldn't come together. They could never really 
come together, Pope and Brenda. Yeah. Do you think? And do you think sometimes the scenes that don't come together are actually the scenes that are the strongest? Yes, absolutely, no question. Um, her um, her inability to understand that she was complicating things for him. Yeah. Her need for him uh, was was so strong, and, and her inability to see what he wanted from her was mm-hmm. was so extreme. You know, it was it was a bit maddening, yeah. and his inability to understand that they really were not they were going to work together, but they were not going to ever be happily married. Yeah, you know, yeah. it took him a long time to grasp that. Yeah. They, and uh, yeah. and I think that was a uh, an interesting part of the of the of the series. And then she got married to Fritz, who's based uh, in many ways uh, on my on my own husband. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our arguments tended to end up in the show. Well, your own husband's in in the in the major crimes. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. And actually, I should point out that. Um, I had resolved never to date another actor, and he wasn't an actor when I was dating him, so ah. I ruined his life. That's, a, um, that's good advice. <laughs> good advice to all, James. Uh. Um, having been an actor, I say that you know I started sure. as a, I started as an actor, so I in the theater, yeah. and and uh, having been an actor, I I say with uh, uh, great fondness that dating actors is. A dangerous occupation. Yeah, it's a real and, heartache sometimes. Yes, yes, it's a it's a hobby you undertake at your own risk. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we were very solidly. We'd been together for uh, almost ten years before wow. he even said aloud, "I want to be an actor." Wow. Yeah. So it was it was a big shock because he'd just gone back to college and just gotten uh, a double degree in history and art history. Wow. And I was like, wow, he's going to be a designer. He's going to do this. And he is a gr- he's a great designer. And he said, you know, I think I want to be an actor. <laughs> and I was stunned, <laughs> absolutely stunned. <laughs> but, you know, it's worked out for him. So I, I'm, I, uh, I totally know that I'm feeling because uh, I do stand-up comedy, and I dated a, another comedian, and it just we butted heads because I was like, oh, I'm funnier than you. You know what I mean? And yes, yes, and and I think uh, you know there, are, you know, two actors together. Sometimes that can be fantastic because you do have somebody else with you who understands the life. But right. it can get competitive, oh, you yeah. know. And people's careers tend to uh, peak at different times. Yes. And if you're both in the same profession, it can be slightly. It, it can be there, jealousy and envy can rear their ugly heads. I mean, it happens anyway. Yeah. I mean, I have actors who, you know, I, friends of mine who've stayed with me who uh, no longer go on IMDb because they can't see their friends doing movies or TV series when they're not working. It just drives them crazy. Uh, and it's depressing. Uh, so in in a relationship, it can be even nuttier, I guess. Um, but but we've we've been very successful working together. It's it's really helped us. Otherwise, I don't. I gosh, you know, the the first three years of the closer, if he had not been working there, I wouldn't have seen him at all. Yeah, well, it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, James, we have to take a quick twenty second break to mention our sponsors. But when we come back, we have a couple Twitter questions. Do do you like Twitter okay, questions? Great. I love them. Sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, Hey guys, Keith here. Have you guys ever had your stuff like a cell phone in a Ziploc bag and you jumped in the water and then you get out of the water and your phone was destroyed and wet? Happens to me all the time. But now you could stop that by going to floodtide.com and purchasing one of their cool new super strong LCV1 bag that is cool looking and in style. Again, that's floodtide.com, www.floodtide.com. F L O O D T I D E dot com. Now back to the show with James Duff. Excellent. Flood tide, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, flood tide. 
You know, I, James, uh, you know, uh, I love the crime genre uh, to no end. I, I'm a big James Elroy fan, uh, you know, L.A. Confidential and so forth, uh, but, uh, you know, the Black Dahlia. And, you know, I, I, I love all the darkness, you know, of Los Angeles. And uh, what I loved about both your series uh, is, that, is that you really punched up, you know, the element of the dark side, the, the noir side. Uh, of Los Angeles, and you all, in, in many ways you updated it, and I, I thought uh, that was a, a nice touch to keep that in the background, that the characters exist in this rather dark, which to me is, is quite true. Uh, and I, I, you know, what, what do you it, do? You find that Los Angeles is a great setting, uh, and of course it's a crime. Los Angeles is a terrific character <laughs> Thank in, you. in both series. I meant we don't think of it as a, a character as a setting. Actually, we think okay. of it as a okay. character. Very good. Very good. And 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 uh, the stories. I mean, that's one of the things we look for. We look for could this story happen in Los Angeles? Would this story mostly happen in Los Angeles? And is this a story that could have happened ten years ago? Sure. Those are questions that we ask ourselves. Sure. And this is a story that could have happened beat for beat ten years ago, exactly as it's laid out. We don't do it. Yeah. And if it's a story that is not Los Angeles centric in some way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we have to find a way to bring Los Angeles into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the cinematography on the show is oh, designed amazing to to really show. It- the city whenever possible or some aspect of the city that people may not be familiar with and in a way it's a problem like I can't even go to Whole Foods without thinking well I wonder if there could be a murder here <laughs> so I <laughs> so you're right there my, in the uh, organic uh, my, alfalfa my whole Yes, my whole tour, <laughs> my whole tour of of every place in Los Angeles is based on. Could somebody be killed here? It's, it's uh, yeah, it's we, not always, but yeah. it, it makes for sure. some pretty unusual conversations sure. uh, when I'm visiting in yeah. one place or another. Well, James, we got a couple of Twitter questions, uh, so I'm just going to get right into it because we only have about ten more minutes of your time. Uh, Joan C. Turner wants to know uh before i go on uh on, the thing i don't like about twitter is you never know if they're real accounts you know what i mean like right but uh joan c turner wants to know james do you have any more plans of directing more episodes of major crimes yes i'm going to direct um um i'm going to direct the last episode of this season oh this coming season so, I mean, I would direct more, but we we ended up doing so many episodes the last four seasons. We did uh, 19, 19, 23, and then 21 episodes. Wow. And, it, it, you know, I just didn't have time. I, I actually um, finished mixing, doing the sound mix, on the last episode of season four on a Friday and started shooting the first episode of season five on a Monday. Wow. And I could have directed an episode, but it would have meant everybody else uh, having to having to do a lot of extra work, and it just wasn't worth it to me. Um, I had enough to do, and I didn't want to um, I didn't want to to push other people to do, and I was directing the identities last year too, mm-hmm. the companion piece to Major Crimes that wow. was on the web for two years. Wow. But oh, I'm very yeah. happy to be directing the last episode, yeah. and it, it, it's and such looking an, forward to doing it. You, you know, it, on on the uh, subject of directing, what I find wonderful about it is uh, you've got this ensemble thing working, and uh, since you you know it's a, it's a spinoff uh, from the closer, and you you've taken most of the cast, which uh, you know, it's quite a cast you have there, and it's it, it's uh, uh, there's so many different types. And by the way, uh, I'm an actor, and I'm I'm half Asian and half Cuban. If you ever need me, in the name of heaven, I'll I'll, ta- I'll take one line. <laughs> oh sure, oh, sure. <laughs> but you know, uh, you had that ensemble going, and you're directing that, and it has a f- that effect of an ensemble piece. And it's funny that both pieces are linked so well like that that you you carry the entire cast over with you. That question was uh, brought it, to you by it, Alan it, Lee. 
Go ahead. <laughs> you know that ensemble Go you've got going there. It, it, it's it's you. Yeah, they are. They're a fantastic group of actors, and it does make doing the show a lot easier. And I, and I know each one of them, and I collaborate with each one of them in their own way. And we we really do work like a family unit. It it shows. So you said another Twitter question. Oh yeah, we have we have a uh, two more. Uh, I was making a joke about that one being from Alan Lee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, this is from uh, Sujin King thirty three. Yeah, weird Twitter names. Huh? I'm just kidding. well. That's right. Numbers numbers uh, one through thirty two are busy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sujin thirty three wants to know. Have you ever thought of writing more movies? Yes, and I I I have thought of writing more movies and I'm and I'm writing a couple of movies now that would be independent features, but here's the problem. And and uh I don't want to sound egotistical at all, but when you write a film, mm -hmm. a lot of times they say thank you, they take the movie, they make it, and that's the last really you have to do with the movie. Right. They don't have to involve you at all. And you know, I you know, I edit all the episodes that I, I do in television. I I mix them. I you know, I do the production meetings. I I work with the directors very closely before they shoot and while they're shooting sometimes and and in a film I I I don't have the capacity to to make the story work the way it's designed. I'm completely dependent right. on the um, you know, on the attitudes of the director and the producer towards me, and I just don't want to be in that position. Mm -hmm. I, if I can't be in the editing room, if I can't participate in the production fully as a partner with my work, then I'm not that interested. I don't mind rewriting movies um, because that's a kind of a fun game and it doesn't take very long. But to spend you know, a a good deal of your life working on a film and put your heart and soul into it, and then they just give you a check and say goodbye. That's not good for me. Oh. Well, if you want to rewrite the movie I wrote, you're more than happy to. You'll make it so <laughs> much better. Than... <laughs> okay, well, we'll we'll talk about that. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, and then this is a just a last question, and this is weird because the question actually relates to the Twitter name. Uh, quotes and thoughts wants to know <laughs> quotes and thoughts uh, they want to know James what's the most inspiring advice you could give amateur writers uh, the, the the most inspiring advice yeah that's... well I will tell you the truth uh -huh. uh, whether it's inspiring or not uh, you get better at the things you do every day and the more you do them the the more likely you are to get better at them not promising anything but writers write yeah. every day and you know really good writers write all the time and are always try you know I'm I'm not it's not that I'm so talented or that I'm so smart I I didn't get a call I, I could not get a college degree I got kicked out of every college that would accept me wow. but I do work very hard and I get up in the morning and I try to write at least four hours a day. And wow. if you wow. do that, if you do that every day, eventually you finish stuff. Mm -hmm. And you will annoy your friends. You will annoy the people who come and visit you and who think you should drop everything to spend that four hours with them. You will annoy your family when you don't pick up the phone because it's during the time when you're writing. You will uh, cause yourself all kinds of grief by making that commitment but if you don't make that commitment it's harder for things to happen yeah. and so that's that's my advice my my inspiring advice is to to write every day and then I'll add just a little bit there write about yourself yeah make sure that what you're writing about is important to you and is emotionally connected to you and if you can do those things, even comedy, by the way, should be emotionally connected to you. Um, and if you can do those two things, then you have a really solid shot 
at accomplishing something. Wow, yeah. That's great advice. That's 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 a great question to end an interview on. Yeah. James, do you have anything where the folks at home can reach you at, like a Twitter you want to plug away? or? A... Well, I'm at uh, James A. Duff on Twitter. That's James, capital A, Duff on Twitter. And, uh, or at James, capital J, A-M-E-S, capital A, capital D-U-F-F on Twitter. And I uh, also, the Major Crimes Facebook page uh, is a great way to communicate both with me and with the entire company. Yeah. Uh, and when we come back, uh, hopefully, I think it's in October, uh, when we come back in late October, uh, I will be on that page quite a bit. Nice. And uh, but you can you can you can contact me via Twitter, um, and I try to get back to people. Sometimes I'm able to. Yeah. Well, I, w- I wish you were here. I mean, I know you were supposed to come to the studio, but meetings got pushed because I wanted to get your autograph on my War at Home DVD that I brought. Oh, I will do. I will manage that somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will manage that somehow. But thank um, you so much. We will. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I really thank enjoyed you. talking to you guys. You got, yeah. Thank you, James. You're awesome, James. I'm a big fan we, of uh, you, and we, thank you so uh, much. We'd love to talk to you again. Uh, sure, anytime. Thank you, guys. It was terrific. I had a blast. Thank right. you, James. Bye, James. Have a good night. Right. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Blood tide, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was James Duff, guys. Yes, indeed, the excellent uh, writer, a very uh, uh, pr- prolific and and successful writer. And I'm going to tell you, c- the closer and um, and the major crimes are really very good police procedurals. And uh, I will be watching all the episodes. You know what I like is uh, I like that uh, that last Twitter question. Like that was very inspiring because, mm-hmm. I mean, what what was that when you, for the audience? it was what's the advice mm-hmm. uh, for uh, a- writers am- a- beginning amateur yeah, yeah yeah because that's right four that's, hours a day yeah he got really into it like and emotionally connected to you yeah and it goes for comedy it, well yeah and I mean, now you're emotionally connected to your routine yeah but I was like wow and yeah. but the thing I found fascinating was the question was by quotes and things and he actually ended on a great great uh, quote yeah and thought you know yeah. like that, that's a very like what are the odds that that happened and uh, and just with the Twitter question and the, the thoughts and isn't you know what I mean only on Razor Rifts ladies uh, and gentlemen could Razor something Rifts. like that happen nowhere <laughs> on the planet <laughs> Could that have happened? Yeah, <laughs> but man, what? No, he's, it was a great guess. And oh, I'm he was so interesting too. Let's face it: when you're on Razor Riffs, man, you come on and you yeah. you rock, you it, rock it, L.A. It would have been so cool to have him in the studio, though. Yeah, because you, know, you would be gaga eyes. Well, see, the, the <laughs> only problem that I will say, as I was speaking to him, you know that I'm an actor, SAG actor. I love how you throw in, if you want to cast me, by the way. Well, you know what? You know what? I, I was shameless. The man's a gentleman. I see the, the ethnic... I was going to do that, me. but I was like, oh, well, I'm surprised you, you didn't say, you didn't say, are you, are you, you know, are you at the comedy store tonight? And I'm sorry. Listen, listen, this is show business. People understand, right? Yeah. And I looked at the, at the, you know, the complexion of, the, of that. You know, there's a lot of ethnic groups in the closer. Yeah. He covered everybody. Yeah. And uh, there's room for Alan Lee here somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a good, and, that's and a there's, good quote. there's room for Keith Razor. Yeah. They, they need a couple of, you know, bountiful blondes uh, on, the, uh, on the show. And yeah. I can see you. I can see you on the closer. I can see you as a kid whose father got, got murdered, and then you become a cop. Well, I was about to pitch that. Yeah, and no, no. You well, jumped I, ahead. No, 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 you know, we have a guest. It's a guest <laughs> time. We don't yeah. want to be talking about our aspirations and and all that stuff. <laughs> Although it can be brought up in a diplomatic manner. Yeah. And I. But thought, you know what I liked most about it was uh, I thought he was just. I mean, I, I, I'm just blown away by how great that interview was. You know, like I. I was, like there's guys we'll, we'll talk to that are great, but then like this one is like gonna leave me with like wow. Okay, for all the other guests who have been on Ra- Razor Ribs, no, no, no. Next week's you... guest will be a lot better than the last one because Keith gets you. You get blown away every week. I get blown away. Now you know what Norm McDonald was on, and I hope Norm 
you are still the greatest. Oh, I love Norm. Norm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why? You, I'm just teasing. I'm just. Yeah, teasing. I know. They I'm, all I'm, love us, and we love them. I'm just in shock. It's like a family. I'm just in shock because I yeah. just talked to one of my personal heroes for an hour. Like that was that was awesome. You know, and I wish he was in the studio so I could get his autograph on my DVD mm-hmm. of his play. And well, he uh, said, he uh, said he oh, yeah. he's going to try to do and that. And then, like, uh, I was going to yeah. say, oh, by the way, here's my mm-hmm. stand-up special. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a part for yeah, Keith there. Reza. There go. Here go. <laughs> All right, guys, before we go, we should mention our sponsors one last time. Uh, Alan, do you want to mention what you got going on before I do this? Because Well, yeah, what, I, what I've got going on, and it's not quite that exciting... I think that next week I'll have the $150 that I owe Screen Actors Guild to be reinstated. And I hope to God it's not more than that. And so next week I'm going to go pay for my SAG card and return to the world of acting. Uh-huh. You imagine and that? Then we, uh, how no. exciting, how, how freaking exciting is that? That would be awesome because when you well, go back to the world of acting, you'll I'm have s- money to go to Hawaii to swim with the alligators. Bam! And, and that's what I'm about to bring oh, up, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Let, bring it yeah, on, I'm going to bring it on. It says you're in cold water. In Ra- the- Raise the Rifters, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Your guys' name is Rifters. Rifters. Have you ever had stuff in a, like your cell phone and you put it in a Ziploc bag and you're like, oh, I'm just going to jump in the water and take a dip. And then you get out and your, your Ziploc bag is filled with yeah. water and your phone sure. is completely destroyed. Destroyed destroyed and like you you can't get the text messages it happens to me all the time Mm -hmm. but now you can stop it by going to Mm www.floodtide.com and purchasing one of their cool super strong lcv1 bags that's cool looking and it's in style again that's www.floodtide.com www.floodtide.e you just messed it up. No, dot com. Dot com. Come okay, on, let's try it again. Let's get right? synchronized one, two, here, man. Three. W, 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 w dot. Okay, one, three W's. Okay, one, W, W, W dot F L O O D T I D E dot com. Bam. All right. Yeah. Yeah, after nine years of friendship, it only took us. Seven tries to say it right. Well, it's that's what love is all about. <laughs> well, so this week, guys, I'm uh, I'm actually doing the stand-up comedy, which is what I do. I don't have to prove it, but I do. You've got something going tonight. I do. I have the roast battle tonight. It's going to the comedy store tonight to roast battle. The roast battle, I either win by a lot or I win by or I lose by a lot. I'm like one of those. It's it's a it's a nightmare for the roast battle guest. Yeah. Or it's an right. easy win right. for them. And we have a friend that's driving us over there who happens to be a comic and a writer as yeah, well. He's Jake, a great joke writer, Jake. but he doesn't want us to mention him. No, no, I'm just saying that, that I, I think it's very nice that we have him here. Yeah, I, I love him too, but he said, don't mention us. I said, okay. Initial J. Yeah. I will. <laughs> well, but I'm also doing the <laughs> Ha Ha Comedy Club tomorrow night at yeah. 8 o'clock. Uh, you can purchase tickets. I'm auditioning mm-hmm. to be a regular at that club. So a paid regular at that club. Fantastic. So Good if luck. you if my if my LA fans sure. can come out and support me, mm-hmm. so I could audition. What about your Orange County fans? Will they make the drive? Uh, they won't make the drive. That's true. My my fans. I'm just promoting. I gave you a chance to plug your stuff. I'm helping you here. I'm helping you. For <laughs> Relax. Fun, you know, maybe 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 Dad Fam will come drive down here. <laughs> All right. So I'm at the Ha Ha tomorrow night, uh, auditioning to be a paid regular. There if you, you could go. go. Good luck. Uh, there's supposed to be a huge surprise super guest, and mm-hmm. that super guest is me, Keith Reza. Oh, All right, guys. Yeah. I'm Keith Reza. Thank you guys so much. See you next week. And thanks again to the one and only James Duff. And I'm Alan Lee. Thank you, Keith, for like, having me. Yeah. Like and subscribe to us on iTunes and follow us on social media. Got to go. Bye. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk.